In this video, I guarantee you'll want to stick around till the end to see this crazy setup and see how I managed to get further than you could ever imagine while still being blocked by bushes. Stay tuned. But before we start, quick disclaimer, I got a creator code. Woohoo! If you decide to buy something in game, please use code Raxor and that would mean a ton to me to help support me and my small channel. Um, I love you all and if you are new, don't forget to sub as I have new crazy IDs coming out, so stay tuned for those. Anyways, on to the video. Balance. A very pretty map. Very well balanced. <laughs> At first sight, most people place towers within the hedges. Like some maps, these walls are usually a good thing. Allows for towers like Ultra Juggernaut to perform extremely well since there are so many walls. Most of the track also loops around the middle three times before finally leaving and exiting on the outside. So again, placing towers on the inside of the map is no question. But today, we'll be doing the opposite. Be why? Because we need some challenges in life and mine just so happens to be a bush. I also decide right now the following. I will not be placing towers in between the hedges at the top or the bottom as well. Not sure if this technic technically counts as outside the inside of the balance, but I honestly think this would still kind of trivialize or defeat the purpose of it. So anything behind the bushes only that will block the line of sight. So we farm, 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 farm. A door is main DPS along with Spirit of the Forest which is cracked on this map. There are so many loop-de-loops that I also get jungle bounties as they synergize well and with the farms and do DPS while snipers can't really do too much. So for the rest of the towers, we just get overclocks and banana farms to hold off for a long time. Unfortunately, there's no super great spot for Adora. Her blood sacrifice after using long armor of light can only get at most three quarters of the sun temples so i just decided to put her in this location so that she's near the start i initially thought of putting her at the top but the problem with putting her at the top was she couldn't really see all the balloons so i at least put her here so that she can get the beginning and the end of the balloons i will also later put a vtsg next to her later so that she can also transform and we can get a little more straight line action by round 100, I need to start getting my temples up, as I need to get ultra boosting. If I want to have enough ultra boosts applied to every temp, every tower and temple, for the later rounds. So we start our Sun Temple army. The first two Sun Temples at the bottom are 1110, and the last one on the bottom left corner is a support temple, a 1011. I decide initially that I would get a support temple in the middle here. And I probably should have just stuck with that, but I get one more later on, and you'll see it. The setup is specific so that, again, there's enough room for towers in between the sun temples. In this case, I managed to fit a call to arms here, along with my overclocks, and a flying fortress to start accumulating pops for the ace paragon. I also get a sun avatar for general damage, with ultra vision so we can see over walls. The, bi the biggest decision I had to make was actually splitting up the paragons. I was trying to decide the best locations for them, uh, as well as provide general overall damage as well as utility. We can't have one side be too overpowered compared to the other, so we need to split them up pretty evenly, and I wasn't sure how to do that. Ace paragon didn't matter because it was global damage anyways, so I decided on getting wizard, dart, and boomerang on the left specifically in these locations that you see here so that when they shoot they have the ability to shoot inside the walls especially for dark paragons juggernaut balls uh, boomer at the end here to catch any leaks and knockbacks and wizard close to the wall since it could see over walls on the right side i will have the vtsg for general damage so i decide i will put ng as well as a ninja paragon also, again, close to the end to try and stun and prevent some leaks just from going out. 
and the ninja will also be in the middle here towards the end uh, to have some visibility inside and occasionally it could throw some sticky bomb attacks and do damage to bats inside but we'll talk a little more about that setup as we get to it. On the top corner we fit four temples. This time I just decide on one support here along with three 1110 temples. I think I made a small mistake here and I put the support temple in the middle when I really should have put it in the back corner instead. It's all good though. On this side, I also get my perma brew to start everything perma brooding up and running, as well as a super brittle, an icicle impale, a super mines, and a ray of doom. A ray of doom just to kind of get some damage on the inside, as uh, nothing else can really shoot in there. Uh, maybe should have gone for a mad, but at that time, I believe that this was the best. And super mines as well, just for general damage, but also potentially catch any leaks at the end. Another call to arms and an ace pad can also fit on the side. So for now, I decide to get a sky shredder, but later we'll be putting the flying fortress there once the ace paragon is set up. On the top, just a glue storm along with some overclocks, as again, it'll be necessary to buff and as many temples as possible in the late game. From here, I actually needed to stop. And the reason was that if I wanted to get of a high as degree as possible, I would need to pause so that I had enough room for ace pads. Even though I want to get the rest of my defense up, I had to wait. So even though I farmed a lot, I also still needed maybe a few million more to afford the Paragons as well as BTSG and a few more temples, so that's why I left the important farms on the right side for now. We get ultra boosting and just farming as much as possible. Eventually, I will sell everything and get my degree 76 Ace Paragon. While this was all going, I decided that NG Paragon would also be worth to get as soon as possible. It can get pops pretty quickly with its NG trap, so I get an XXXL trap for farming and in no time, I'm also able to get a degree 76 NG Paragon. We finally get her VTSG. Always have to catch my breath and make sure it changes color. Uh, sometimes I mess up and forget enough sacrifices in one category. and. This is where I kind of believe I made one mistake. Although, again, hard to debate, hard to kind of debate. I probably should have gone for VTSG last. The reason for this is I can actually fit three temples at the bottom, but because VTSG gives too much rain with the support buff, although along with another support temple I get later on, uh, it's a bit more of my fault, but I needed the defense along with some area at the bottom so I can start putting other towers to eventually try and get maxed uh, degree 76 uh, paragons. In the meantime, I get three more sun temples with one of them being a support temple as well and the rest being 1110 temples. Behind the VTSG are just hiding a few overclocks and here I also get a homeland. I get a bez here because fun fact bez can actually see over walls with some of its attacks so it's still at least a little bit useful in these challenges. I also get my ninja ready, as mentioned, because we want the ninja paragon to be here and up and running soon. The tech bot you also see is for the ultra boost as well, as well as some other tech bots later for homeland and call to arms, as I later leave the setup uh, running on its own, as I have other things to do in life like eat and sleep. We get a balloon incineration, again, more of an interesting tower, but probably not super necessary. I maybe should have tried a pop and aw, since technically it has increased damage against bads, but uh, I still don't think it's super worth it, but maybe we'll try next time. Eventually, we get a degree 75 ninja. Pretty decent, but I probably needed a bit more cash to get 76. Oh well, that's okay. We get Arcane Spikes as they do decent damage to help farm pops faster as Archmage isn't getting pops up fast enough. Eventually, we get another degree, 75. Mm, just a bit short, but I'll take it for now. At this point, I want to get the rest of my defense up as the rounds were starting to get a little further. 
we move on to boomers and get those farmed up as well. We were, again, as mentioned, we were slowly starting to get closer to around 300. And I knew that if we started to pour into 300 and I didn't have my defense fully up, it would be a problem. So I settled for a degree 74 boomer paragon. And as you see here, the leg is also starting to get a bit strong at this point, uh, as I did get a mid round. Finally, the last Paragon being Dart. Again, uh, All we can get all the Paragons except for Boat, which is a bit of a bummer, but that's all right. We get a degree 74. Again, probably missing a bit on the pop side, but it's still fine. At this point, we were, again, scary close to around 300, and I would like the rest of my defense up and ultra boosted as soon as possible. So... We finally fit two more temples, two more sun avatars, two overclocks, one will end, which will end up being the blood sacrifice, a last call to arms, another archmage as it sees over walls and does decent damage still, and the perma brew which will finally be Chinook tier, and finally our favorite favorite tower, a balloon master alchemist. Ta-da! Again, fixed so it can do billions of damage. I'm so glad it can keep up with the VTSG. And finally, I throw in two more unstable concoctions on the top side in between so that they can help with overall damage. And that's the final setup. It feels bad because the only tower that we're not really able to get here is, tower, is the tower I considered one of the most valuables, which is Navark. Again, Boat Paragon being able to one-shot bads is crucial to getting super super late but with our current setup we are sitting pretty strong again i do get four tech bots to automate ultra boost homeland and call to arms so that they're constantly cycling throughout i only really use abilities uh, when there are too many fortified bads clumped up in the middle to maximize the amount of damage they do and actually this is one thing we used to we need to discuss and the reason why most late game runs actually fail and that is spaced fortified bads the problem with this is that they're just too spaced to concentrate damage on which means by the time you do enough damage to kill one the other one is sitting pretty healthy with no damage on it letting them whiz right by right past your defense however on balance this actually solves this issue for us because all the bads kind of concentrate in the middle of the map, which in inadvertently lets us do damage to other bads as well. And suddenly they're not so spaced anymore. So with this in mind, let's see how far we can go unbalanced. So we made it pretty far, round 369. Nice. Here are the pop counts of the towers. So the first temple on this corner getting 430 million, not too shabby. Blue incineration with 220 million. Again, did decent damage, but it's only because it defortifies. Uh, Super monkey with almost 193 million, almost 100, pretty good. Uh, this super monkey with 376 million sorry uh temple this is the support temple it almost this support temple also made a million dollars almost which is pretty interesting but 406 uh bez did 102 uh i actually did a lot more than i expected this run uh dora doing almost 300 million 294 pretty good all right vtsg with 2.8 billion so so far, way in the lead. Archmage with 44 million. 
this super monkey with 81 million pretty good and this other super monkey with 72 million and oh i do want to go bma let's see oh yes 3.2 billion so again bma always coming out on top i mean vtsg is great but who cares about vtsg when your bma absolutely destroys them and pops a little balloon boy ng uh paragon with uh 350 million 351 not too shabby uh, i did explode the ng uh the ng bombs quite a bit um the ninja paragon also caught up pretty well it did 2.2 billion as well so kudos to him uh, Sun Temple in this corner, 389 million. Again, not too bad. Another Sun Temple with 373 million. This one, so they all had pretty good range. So they were able to see the middles, which probably why they had a lot. 302 million with this one. Again, with pretty decent range. Uh, this, this one made 1.2 million cash for me. So pretty good, as well as... Another 316 million, 147. Uh, so I, I think I should have put the support temple in this position, but that's all right. Uh, 250 for Flying Fortress. Again, Flying Fortress, one of the best tier fives. I did an Inferno ring here. I actually didn't mention this, but I did even more tax because even more tax does 1000 damage as opposed to 750. And the Unstable Concoction I don't think is super necessary, but this Sun Temple is 420 million. Super Mines, 223 million. Uh, pretty good overall. Um, so I don't think Ray of Doom was actually super great, unfortunately, so didn't do that much. Um, my Boomerang Paragon did 287 million. Um, and Dart caught up actually, 285 million, which is pretty good. I think it's because if it shot the darts in, it was pretty good. So, Wizard Paragon, 452 million, pretty solid. Uh, this temple did 231 million as well. Again, 1.3 billion, or so 1.3 million in cash too. Ace Paragon with 684 million as well. And this Sun Temple with 167 uh, million as well. Thinking maybe that one should have been a support as well for more range, but again, that's all right. And then 319 million for this last one. And I believe that's all the interesting towers. I think I missed one uh, other tower here, but that is all right. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And Thank you for being patient for me as I worked on this video, as this video took quite a long time. I'm not gonna lie, it took three days to record this, uh, partially because of lag and everything else. But again, if you guys enjoy these videos and enjoy the effort I put into them, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video.